why US dollar rates lower than Kenya shilling rates. My name is Charles Miano, Senior Investment Analyst, Nabu Capital. I'm sure you've asked yourself, uh, why are US dollar rates typically lower than local currency rates? So in particular, if you're looking at dollar rates, you'd see rates, let's say, below 3% and then Kenya shilling rates something above, let's say, 8%. So there are a variety of reasons why you see that difference. And uh, I'll go through three particular reasons why there is that difference. The first one is in regard to the demand of the currency. As, as we note, the US dollar is a global currency and it is the de facto or the premier currency um, of our world, especially when it comes to transactions all over the world. So the demand on that particular currency is relatively high, given that it is used to price different um, goods, uh, services uh, all across the world. So the demand on the currency is relatively high compared to, for example, using the Kenya shilling, um, which is a local currency. So compared to those two particular currencies, the demand um, in the dollar is higher than yeah, of the Kenya shilling. So given that difference in demand and given this, uh, given that difference in demand, uh, the higher the demand, the stronger the currency or the stronger the value of that currency. And uh, we've noted that uh, with that strength in the, uh, the strength in the dollar, uh, it tends to attract uh, relatively lower rates or relatively lower interest rates in particular compared to interest rates that you would see uh, with um, the Kenya shilling. So for that particular reason, uh, the Kenya the dollar has a higher um, has a lower interest rate compared to the interest rate that you would earn in a Kenya shilling um, uh, opportunity. The second thing is in regard to inflation. Basically, inflation is the persistent rise in the value of a certain co uh, value of a certain good or service. So the US, the US has uh, inflation rates particularly lower, uh, sub or lower than 2% compared to Kenya's uh, whose, uh, whose inflation rate ranges uh, between 4 to 8% uh, over, the, over the last uh, one year. So with the, difference in with the difference in inflation rates, it brings uh, what we call differential. And with that differential, a country which typically has lower inflation has uh, lower interest rates, and a country which has a, a higher inflation has higher interest rates. So there's that uh, relationship that comes, um, that uh, defines those two when it comes to inflation as interest rates. So the US has a lower inflation, therefore it attracts uh, lower interest rates. And Kenya has a higher inflation, and therefore it attracts uh, it attracts um, higher, uh, higher interest rates. And the third point is monetary policy. And the monetary policy is determined by the central bank in different countries. For example, in the US, it's determined by the Federal Reserve, and in Kenya, by the Kenya Central Bank. And in this case, just to give you an explanation of what that means is, whenever the central bank wants to influence how much money is in supply in the economy, they either increase rates or lower rates. When they increase the rates, they want to reduce the amount of supply in the market. When they reduce, um, when they are reducing the rates, they want to increase uh, the amount of supply in the market. So it's an inverse uh, relationship. So in this case, what we saw after the pandemic is the U.S. dollar. I mean, the U.S. Federal Reserve reduced their rates or cut their rates in order to increase the amount of money supply in the market. So they reduced their rates all the way to around 0% levels. And we've seen a similar thing, uh, for instance, in Kenya, where the rates uh, have been cut uh, throughout 2020 and are currently at 7%. Uh, and, and so with that impact, what, what happens is there is demand uh, for for the bonds and uh, demand for treasury bills and treasury bonds. So whenever there is high demand, the price of that bond goes. Uh, the price, the higher the demand, sort of the lower the price. Uh, I mean, the sort of the lower the price, particularly uh, when it comes to uh, when it comes to interest rates for the bond. So what we've seen um, is the 
with that high demand, we've seen interest rates for bonds, especially in the US market, go very low. So we saw, for example, the 10-year bond go from 1.2, uh, 1.3% levels all the way to about 0.2% within this uh, period since the month of March. And also we've seen sort of similar trends in different markets. And so this, uh, by explaining how the rates have, for example, the 10-year bond moved from 1.2 all the way to 0, uh, 1.2 all the way to 0 0.2% or so level, it explains or gives you a, a sense of why we see the dollar rates very low compared to maybe a Kenya a bond where uh, the 10-year bond is currently at around 11%. But even before the coronavirus, uh, before even the central bank cut rates, the, it was around 11, um, around 11.5 or percent. So it hasn't dropped significantly to or and it's it's remained fairly within the same range, so that just gives you a sense that as long as um, there is significant demand in the U.S. dollar, as long as there's a difference in inflation rates between Kenya and and the U.S. and the United States, and as long as uh, uh, there's a difference in monetary policy uh, between the different countries, then you will see. Uh, a, a difference in how much uh, interest rate or how much return you receive for your investment. And therefore, that, uh, those, part those three reasons explain why um, the US dollar rates are lower than the Kenyan shilling rates. Subscribe to learn and make informed investment decisions. And in our next video, we shall be answering the question, how do you start investing in the US dollar? <music>